Hi, this is Phil Chandler. I promised you a follow-up on the Zest Hive, which is right here in front of me. It's uh, right now. It's the uh, end of March, and you can see the bees are bringing back pollen and looking very enthusiastic about life in general. Lots of pollen going in. Um, which is uh, exactly what we want to see at this time of year. Now you may remember that there are actually two colonies in this hive. Um, we had this colony over here with a high entrance and then this colony here, which um, unfortunately died out really before winter. Um, and I, I suspect it was because I replaced the queen and uh, quite late on and I think possibly she wasn't uh, well mated. I think um, the weather wasn't great at the time. I think the queen failed and that caused this, um, this left hand colony as it were to uh, expire. However, the right hand colony is thriving and what I, what I in fact did, uh, it was a fairly cold day I think back in February, um, I came down here, I noticed there was, there was no activity at all in this entrance on the left. So I, I went in and had a quick look and I could see that this colony was, uh, had, had virtually disappeared. I mean, there, there were almost no bees in the, uh, in the side of the hive at all. And so I removed the central divider and let this colony that you're seeing now flying, um, I let them have the food that the left-hand colony had gathered. So there's a whole load of um, frames with, uh, with honey on. And clearly they've benefited, well, I, you know, one, one assumes that these, these guys have benefited from the extra food and they're going very well and uh, looking very strong and healthy. And you can see loads of pollen coming in. I'm not wearing a I'm not wearing a bee suit right now, but I'm just going to have a little peep inside because I can't resist it. Um, I hope I don't regret it. We'll see. But these bees were pretty good last year. They were quite uh, amenable. This is a very lightweight roof, as you can see. It's made from uh, Celotex and aluminium tape. It's it's uh, I, I made it deliberately made it very light because. Obviously, a roof that size is, is uh, if it's made out of solid timber, is going to weigh quite a bit. And um, so, yeah, it's lasted you know fine so far. I may have to patch it up here and there, but it, yeah, it's okay. The aluminium tape's held up rather well. So, um, yeah, so it's just held down with a couple of straps because obviously, otherwise, the uh, the, the wind would blow it away. So I'm just going to peel this side back. Um, and see what's going on. Okay, so there's bees over here, right at, right at the other end. Um, although, you know, it's now only one big colony. Um, these guys here um, are uh, on the combs towards this end of the hive. So they've, uh, they've clearly ad adopted the, uh, these, these extra frames. Um, I didn't do a very good job of straightening it when I opened it before, so I'm just going to maybe just tidy up a little bit so they don't get too much brace comb but they look good um, quite a motley crew they're mostly quite dark there are some stripers amongst them but it's a fairly dark uh, colony and they had a they had a new queen uh, back last summer As you can see they're, they're, they're not really um, they're not bothered about me being here at all. Now, this is a, with the, the arrangement that I've got here, uh, which is, as you can see, it's, uh, this is just um, Reflectix, a sheet of Reflectix, which is laid literally across the tops of the frames. Um, what we're getting here is a build-up of brace comb, which obviously, you know, we don't really want. Um, it's not doing any harm, so, you know, I could leave it, but as I'm here, um, I'll just peel that off. Um, it doesn't seem to be upsetting them at all. 
so there's a certain amount of propolis you can see along the sides here and um, you may have watched my another of my video videos when I talked about the possibility of propolis being um, a useful antiviral uh, agent at the moment so I am actually going to um, grab a knife and I'm going to scrape some of this propolis off because um, well, it could be useful, shall we say. Uh, I'm planning on experimenting uh, using propolis vapor, and I, I, I'm planning to use a, a, a standard commercial uh, vaping machine, I don't know what you call it, a vapor, I suppose, um, to create a, uh, a propolis vapor which I could then inhale, or, or, or not just me, obviously, anybody could, could then inhale. Um, here's the colony proper, by the way. They, these guys are, are really busy here and I'm looking good. Um, none of them are coming out and having, having a go at me, so I'm quite happy about that. Uh, I won't leave them uncovered for any length of time. It's pretty warm today. I mean, it's, not, it's okay. I would guess it's about, I don't know, 12 degrees centigrade, something like that. Don't ask me what that is in Fahrenheit. I don't do Fahrenheit anymore. Gave that up about uh, 30 years ago. So I'm afraid you Americans will have to do your own conversion. Um, I'm just going to peel it away at this end and have a quick look. So there's, there's loads, I can see loads of honey in there. There's plenty of stores. These guys have got all the food they could possibly need to sustain them through the remains of this uh, beginning of spring and on into, well, on into swarm season, no doubt, if I allow them to, uh, to swarm. Um, I'm not really planning on doing anything much in the way of swarm control in here because they've got so much space, they may not feel the need to. What I could do, what I may well do, is use this colony as it seems very strong. Um, this colony might make a good candidate for uh, making up splits so I could maybe take out you know two or three frames at a time and make up splits give them a new queen and uh, that way I can propagate this um, very uh, amenable little uh, breed of bee and I can put my you know, they're, they're very uh, non-reactive shall we say you can see they're, they're moving away from my hand rather than Sometimes they'll they'll walk onto my fingers, but they're not don't seem that keen on doing so. But uh, they're not uh, they're not being defensive anyway. So that's nice. A good quality to have. You don't want bees that are too passive, however. You you want bees that can look after themselves if they do get. Um, attacked by a predator, you know, if they get uh, wasps or something trying to attack them. You want bees that can defend themselves against wasps, but you don't want bees that uh, become, uh, uh, let's not use the word aggressive, bees that become over defensive too quickly uh, because that just becomes a nuisance uh, in the apiary. You want bees that are reasonably manageable but they still have the capacity to defend themselves when necessary. Um, this is mostly foragers, but, but in fact there is a, I don't know whether you can see this on, on this camera, um, it looked to me like there was a little uh, wave of um, orientation flying going on. I'm not, I'm not absolutely sure about that now. They, they look like they're all flying back in, so they may have just been they may have just been waiting for me to move away, as so that happens too. Uh, but often you'll find at certain times of the day, uh, I, I found it fairly typically happens around two o'clock for some reason, in, my, in this apiary, um, you get a whole bunch of bees come out and fly head, head towards the hive. They fly backwards and forwards, they fly in figure of eights and sometimes circles, and that's called orientation flying. That's when they're memorizing their home location so that when they go out foraging they can find their way back um, or specifically when they when they get near to home that they, they can see where they're where they're headed 
Um, obviously they have other means of navigation at a distance, but close to home they need to know how to make the last few, uh, how should we say, last few metres back into their home um, quickly and efficiently because that's probably the time when they're most likely to be uh, facing possible predation, certainly from things like hornets that tend to hawk around the entrance to a hive. Um, obviously some bees w would get taken in the field by predators but you know a, a sensible predator is going to spend a lot of their time um, hunting where there's most prey and obviously close to the hive is where, where the bees will be most numerous so it makes sense for a hornet to hang around outside a hive. Now the um, the European hornet, um, Vespa crabro, does take a few bees during the season, but usually not, and certainly not yet. It's, it's too early for to see Vespa crabro hunting. But uh, later in the year, you will see Vespa crabro. Uh, I see them quite often in my apiaries, and occasionally they'll take a bee, um, but a lot of the time they seem to spend actually looking for other things to eat. So. Um, I, they don't bother me at all in terms of the number of bees that they take. Um, however, the uh, the exotic pest that we're facing now is the yellow-legged Asian hornet, which is Vespa velitina, and that's a different matter altogether. They're, they are very efficient hunters, and they um, they have much bigger uh, nests or, or, or larger numbers, should we say, of hornets. You know, they have they have thousands of hornets rather than a few hundred, like the like Vespa Crabro does. So um, when they arrive, uh, well, and I think it is a when rather than an if, but uh, sadly um, when they arrive we're going to have a big problem to face keeping our bees safe. So we've got to do as best we can to keep them out of the country for as long as possible until a, uh, a really um, solid solution is found to them. I've talked about that quite a lot elsewhere, um, but I think it's something we all need to be aware of in this country. And there's a few bees here, kind of mind they, sunning themselves on the on the front of the hive, having a rest or whatever they happen to be doing. Um, exactly where they're foraging, of course, um, hard to say, but you know there are a lot of wildflowers in this area. And you can see there's there's a load of primroses over there and celandines, um, and there will be a lot more in hedgerows and on the uh, hillsides around here. So we are blessed for pollen at this time of year. I know um, a lot of uh, people in other parts of this country and certainly in the in parts of the USA. Um, feel that they need to feed pollen patties in the spring. That's not something I've ever done and I don't think it's, any, it's something that I would ever need to do here. Um, we, are, we are loaded with early spring pollen. Uh, we've got uh, pollen bearing trees like willow and hazel and um, we've got masses of uh, early flowers and we've got gorse. Uh, you can't see gorse from here but up on up on the higher ground there's a lot of gorse in fact just across the road there's a there's a load of gorse and um, gorse is actually one of the best pollens uh, in terms of its uh, protein content uh, it's one of the best pollens that bees can take anywhere so um, gorse is a good thing to have it doesn't produce much in the way of nectar i'm told but uh, its pollen is especially rich in protein so if you've got gorse within reach, then protein is not something you need to worry about. Uh, I'm not sure that gorse grows in the USA. Uh, I think it's a European. It's a plant of the moorlands. It's a acid, acid soil, peaty soil, um, alt high altitude, relatively high altitude um, plant. Uh, actually, thinking about it, I don't think altitude's that big of a deal because um, I know places where it grows where it's not uh, especially high at all, but certainly um, acid soil, just like heather, it grows, it grows with heather in fact, as anyone who's been to Dartmoor will know.
what I haven't seen yet in this hive, uh, not that I've been paying a special attention, but I haven't actually seen a drone fly in yet, in or out. Um, but I have seen drones around here, so I'm quite confident that uh, come the time for making splits, which could be quite soon, uh, we shouldn't have any problem getting our queens mated. So that's, uh, that will do for now. I shall do a proper um, check on this hive fairly soon, maybe next week when it warms up a little bit more. And um, we'll have a good look inside and see what's going on. But for the meantime, these, like, these guys look like they are gonna do well this year. So uh, thanks for watching this little video and if you enjoy these videos um, and if you want to support my work then uh, friendsofthebees.org if you wouldn't mind making a small donation there that would be greatly appreciated uh, but if not then please share this video um, click the you know like buttons and make sure you subscribe and click the little bell thing and you'll get advance notice of all my videos. Okay thanks for watching see you in the next one.